am Jennifer Eileen, and I am so delighted to welcome you to my cafe, my pet info cafe. Pour yourself a warm cup of your favorite, and let's chat about our love of animals. We all need the warmth and love that animals bring into our lives, and they need us too. In our cafe, we share tips, success stories, information for humans in our fur or feathered or finned family to have happy, fulfilling lives together. I would like you to meet the volunteer team who are dedicated to saving the lives of community cats by providing valuable TNR or trap neuter return services and engaging with our community through education and outreach programs all designed to decrease the number of cats that enter the county shelter. They have provided medical care and spay neuter services for over 3,000 community cats in Loudoun County. In this episode, we will demonstrate the definition of community cats and colonies, what is trap neuter return, and what are the benefits, demonstrate how to use and set a humane trap, care of a cat through trapping, through veterinarian spay neuter, and return to colony, or perhaps adoption. Please welcome the Loudoun Community Cat Coalition volunteers, Thomas Beauvais, President Executive Director of Loudoun Community Cat Coalition, Kim Outlaw, Kitten Rescue Team Foster Coordinator, Foster Trapper, and Pam Beauvais, Foster Trapper. So, hi, welcome hi. here. So, there's so much to say, so much that you, you are the experts in. So, tell us about what are community cats, what is TNR, and why do we do it? So, community cats are free roaming cats who live outdoors. They're generally unowned. They don't have a specific owner, but people do put food out and provide shelter and care for them and watch for medical issues. That's when they contact us or other groups to, to do the trap neuter return. So the reason we do TNR, it's a, uh, our goal is to humanely reduce the outdoor cat population. And we do that through trap neuter and return. So we, for cats that are totally feral, that want to stay outdoors and live outdoors, they're not socialized, we trap them, we run them through our programs, take them to the vet, they get vaccinated for rabies, distemper, they're spayed or neutered, and then we return them, we microchip them, we cut off the tip of their left ear so that they're recognized uh, visually that they've been fixed, and we return them to the colony location where they came from. And so we've got some great pictures of colony. Would you just tell us a bit about the colony, the porch colony that we're showing? Sure. Um, this colony has been uh, one that we searched for for a long time. We knew we had black and white kitties somewhere in this one particular area. We just couldn't find them. Uh, fortunately, our uh, TNR coordinator, Vicki, uh, spotted them out on the porch, uh, talked to the uh, caretaker. It turns out the lady that where all the cats were staying wasn't actually the owner of the cats. Uh, they, uh, they were owned by another one, but they were both caring for the cats, and they were just reproducing out of control. So we um, uh, set out to get them all spayed and neutered. This was another very large colony of over 30 cats, and so we had to uh, go back a few times in order to, uh, we call it closing out the uh, colony, uh, making sure that every single one of them is, has been uh, spayed, neutered, microchip, vaccinated, and everyone's looking happy and healthy. Well, thank you. That's a wonderful example of uh, why we do trap, neuter, return, mm -hmm. and colony care. So mm -hmm. thank you. Now that we understand community cats' humane trapping, let's strap on our seat belts and take a ride with Tom Beauvais and the LC3 team. We will have a driver's seat view of the caring and thorough process of caring for outdoor cats from hoteling, transport, through spay, neuter, and vaccinations, recovery, and return to their home base. Let's go now for a ride along with Tom. Hey everybody, it's Tom with Loudoun Community Cat Coalition. We've got a spay day tomorrow at the Spay Spa Neuter Nook. We're gonna be bringing probably 30, more than 30 cats in. So step one, we put cardboard down and we put plastic down. This is gonna be the transport van for all the cats. And this is where we load them in and out. Um, we load them in on Monday morning about 5.30 a.m. for their trip. Uh, we have to be over there in Davidsonville by eight, between 7.30 and eight. So step one is just helping get the van set up. And then I will show you inside the shed where we're keeping, where we keep the cats overnight before and after surgery next and show you what's involved in setting that up. In step one, also prepping the van, we also put pee pads in there above the plastic. So I just finished doing that. And garage here where we have lots of tables set up with pee pads on them. 
Uh, we got a portable air conditioning unit keeping the place at a nice cool 76 degrees. In the winter, we put a portable heater in here. We take the bait out of the traps. We give the cats water and food, uh, and then we got to pull that out before midnight. So if we feed them at all, if they've been not been fed very well, or if they're uh, when it's hot like this, we make sure they they get hydrated before surgery. We put uh, wet food or kibble with water in the traps, and then we get it out by about 10 p.m. And then the the cats will spend the night in here until tomorrow when uh, we get up bright and early and around five between five and five thirty we load the van and then set off for annapolis sunday night uh, coming up on 10 o'clock and we're just about finished up with today's prep for the spay day tomorrow morning we've got about half the cats here right now we've got it all up on tables we've got the ac running we've got the fan going on it's a really hot day today so it actually climbed back up to about 79 degrees in here which is still fine um, for all the kitties. We've got another uh, 18 cats on the way for a total of 32 cats for today. I've taken pictures of all these cats in the traps and annotated the photo with each of their, their site numbers so we know which cat was originally in each trap and make sure before we return them that they're all back in the correct traps. As soon as the other cats get here, I'll take photographs of all of those. We'll get them documented and then we'll go through each trap and remove any food, bait food or food and water that was put in the traps today after the cats were caught so that they don't get any food after, uh, after midnight tonight or even after 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever time we get them cleaned out. It's about 6.30 a.m. A little bit late getting out of here, but 31 cats loading. It was a pretty tough morning. Um, as you can see, we're all loaded up in the TNR van. So we got two layers. We got pee pads between the layers of traps, and we're ready to go to the space spa and neuter nook to get all these cats fixed it <clears throat> today. So I will uh, show you some video when we get there. Uh, it's about a 90 minute drive, so it'll be a little while, and then I'll. Uh, let you know what happens at the other end. We just arrived at the space spa in Neuternook and the job now is unloading the van. We load up the cats on these little carts over here. They go in through that door and up the elevator to the second floor and that is where they will have their spay day today. Hey, it's Tom with Loudon Community Cat Coalition and this is the other part after we unload the cats we're inside the space spa in Neuternook. And we bring the cats up in the elevator, we line them all up down out here in the lobby. And they check all the cats to check them in. We make sure the vets know if there's any problems with them. And they, from here they go back and get spayed. And after this, when we hang out in Annapolis and wait for the call that all the cats are done. It's about 4.30 and we just loaded up the van from the Space Spa in Neuternook. We're heading home now and uh, a little exhausted because I was rushing to get things done. There's a thunder thunderstorm rolling in. I didn't want to get the cat soaked or myself soaked with the lightning. But you can see here it's a lot quieter. A lot quieter on the way home with all the kitties just waking up from anesthesia. They're all awake but they're still pretty chill. So that's typically the way it goes. You have a lot of singing and, and meowing on the way in and a very quiet ride on the way home. So we're heading back to Leesburg now, where we will unload the cats uh, back into the two hotel uh, places, my garage and our TNR coordinator Vicky's uh, basement or garage um, for overnighting tonight. Make sure they're all okay, we monitor them, and then uh, we they will be returned to their homes tomorrow to be released back with their, with their caregivers. It's very rewarding to get all these cats fixed at one time. Uh, every month and it's uh, it's well worth it. It's very very uh, good experience. And this is the final phase of the spay day. After the van gets back, we unload all the cats, we sort them back into their colony groups, we confirm their identities against the photos and we match them up to make sure every cat is in the same trap that it was sent out in. They all come back in the same trap so we know they're gonna go back to their proper location when they're returned. And then we use our trap dividers. We change the paper if it's soiled, the paper inside each cat's trap. We put in food, wet food, dry food and water so they can rehydrate and get their bellies full and uh, spend the night here healing. 
and then tomorrow the, the, all the cats will go to the caregivers unless they were recommended to be held for extra time if they had a medical issue or an uh, extended procedure then the vets will note annotate that on the paperwork and we keep them for additional time but all these cats were cleared for return tomorrow we actually have all the cats we unloaded them back into the garage and we've got them all already fed uh, let me show you some cats the this guy chowed down on his food already this uh, little kitty ate some of his or her food little kitten in here has already eaten half a can of food this guy's not been very hungry. He's just chilling out after after the big day. Uh, this boy ate all of his food. He was hungry. And this one right here also ate most of, most of his food. So anyway, all the cats are set up here. A bunch of them were already taken uh, by Vicky over to her place where she's gonna be overnighting them in the garage. I've only got six here. Uh, remaining here for tonight. Uh, one of the uh, trappers, uh, Mel, already came and picked up two cats. Two cats that she's uh, keeping at her place before they get returned tomorrow. We usually wrap up here at about uh, 8 o'clock uh, p.m. on Monday night and then I gotta come back out and check on these cats every couple of hours uh, until we go to, to go to bed tonight and then sometimes if there's any issues or concerns about the cats we'll check them even in the middle of the night. And Tuesday when the remaining cats get returned you know, we break down the tables in here take them back to the storage unit so that's it we appreciate everyone who supports community cats and supports uh, what we do here at Loudoun Community Cat Coalition good night stay tuned and let's take a look at how humane trapping actually works okay um, what I'm gonna do is demonstrate a drop trap for you um, a drop trap is really useful in a trapper's tool of resource of tools, um, <clears throat> especially when you have a colony that is already half fixed and you have other cats that have come into the, into the colony or you didn't trap everyone the first time. So you don't want to retrap those ear tip cats. You're looking for the cats that need to be fixed. So a drop trap comes in um, handy in those cases because you can visually watch the trap and see who is going underneath it and when you have the right target cat underneath the trap, well, and here we have a few uh, cats here from our community that are going to get trapped. Um, this is also really helpful when you're trying to trap, um, say, a litter of kittens who are, you know, six weeks old and they're running around. They're all going to come and eat underneath this drop trap. So it makes it easy to kind of trap them all at once. So once the target cat is under the drop trap and you've identified that that's the one that you want, usually you're not standing this close. You're usually standing quite a distance back, but you would have a string attached to the handle here and you would go ahead and pull it. Okay, so now that you have your target cat underneath your trap, obviously you can't do anything with them to extract them other than you're gonna use a regular trap and you're gonna actually set it against the drop trap and you're gonna transfer the cat into the box trap. Um, the drop trap is usually covered with a, a tarp, and then <clears throat> your uh, box trap is also covered. And the way that the cats are going to go into your box trap, you're going to uncover this part, and they're going to just naturally want to go into some place that's darker. So they're going to naturally just walk right in, and you're going to close that, and now you've got your cat in your box trap ready to go. And that is a demonstration of a drop trap. I am going to demonstrate a box trap. Uh, this is what um, we use for uh, TNR, the trap neuter return. Uh, the four key things you need are the trap, you need newspaper, you need your food, and a trap cover. Very, very important four things. Uh, what you want to do, you uh, actually, before you um, go out and trap any cat, what you want to do is the logistics prior. You want to uh, contact someone 
uh, like our organization or another TNR organization to make sure um, you have a vet appointment scheduled. Uh, when, and, uh, when and where you're going to trap, who's going to transport the cat, who's going to um, overnight the cat, bring it to the vets, um, and then care for it after it's been spayed and neutered or neutered, and then who's going to return the cat home. So uh, you wanna make sure you get all of that uh, figured out prior to trapping anything. And you wanna use a trap like this that uh, TNR organizations have. This is specifically uh, designed for cats. The, thing, the traps that you find at your local hardware store, they're for wildlife. So you wanna, you wanna make sure you use something like this. So uh, it's very simple. You push in this one door. You wanna uh, include your paper first. And the reason why we put the paper in um, is uh, protects the feet of the cat um, and also uh, takes care of all of the, any messes that the, the cat will create. So uh, you get your paper in, you wanna put it in on this side where the, um, the trap is going to be latched. And on this side, this is a two door trap and that's why we like it for the cats. And then you put your your food all the way at the other end of this trap, as close to this edge as possible. So you have your food. You also want to put dabs of uh, food and uh, kibble, uh, treats, or what you wanna do is lure the cat into the trap so he gets close, close enough to the trip plate. So you have your food set in there, you put your, um, your door on there, and very important, make sure it's locked. They all have a, have a lock there. You go over here, you push this door in, lift, lift the, uh, the uh, door up. There's a little latch right here. Somewhere. That, um, that you pull. And you can see where the, um, where the uh, lift plate is, is lifting up. So when that cat walks in and he's getting the little um, dabs of food, we can uh, get our kitty. Kitty coming in, he's gonna walk up here, get his food, and he's gonna step on this, tr uh, this plate. You wanna have your trap cover very close by, um, nearby and I always keep mine on top of the trap so when he walks in you calmly walk up to the trap and just nicely cover the cat completely. This will ensure that the, uh, well the cat calms down pretty quickly afterwards um, and uh, settles down and then you can uh, Take the cat from the location and put them in to a more secure area. You want to, um, if you're continuing to trap throughout the day, you want to make sure that the cat is in a nice, safe um, place, ideally in a climate-controlled area, but at least out of the cold, out of the sun, and out of the wind. Um, and you, uh, you want to ensure that you never leave a set trap um, open. And, and ready to be uh, triggered. You never want a, a, want a cat to walk in without a cover because it will go bananas um, and trying to get out. So you really don't want, want that to happen to any, any animal. So you wanna make sure that you're always there and um, you have your trapped cat. And that's the essence of trapping a, humanely trapping a, a community cat. And then he's ready for spaying, neutering, microchip, vaccines, and a happy, healthy life.
Now that the cats have been medically cleared and healed, they are ready to return to their home base, the same location they came from and their home. So let's talk about now that we have healed the cats and hoteled them and they're ready to go home, we're going to show some videos of releasing the cats. Pam, tell us about the, the porch cats and how that worked. Uh, the porch cats, they were a very large colony uh, and when they got home we just uh, set them all down in a row. We go uh, one by one, lift off their trap cover, um, open up the door and some are occasionally disoriented and are facing the wrong direction so we have to pull <laughs> the trap cover back a little more but they just uh, pop out, they know exactly where they are and they go to their uh, immediate uh, favorite hiding place <laughs> but they know they're home and they're happy and they'll, they'll be happy and healthy Absolutely. from here on in. And Tom, you had some background on the, the farm and the release with the geese. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so that, that was a location there. Again, there were more than 30 cats there in that colony. And the, the, the farmer who unfortunately passed away at this, at this point, he knew every single cat. He had named every cat. He knew their behaviors. And so when, when we went to release them, he also had these two geese that were his buddies. <laughs> And while we were trapping, setting up traps, uh, the geese followed us everywhere. If you weren't careful, they'd pick your pocket. They literally would stick their <laughs> beak right in your pocket, take something out. And uh, they were very friendly, but they were the bosses. So as we were releasing these cats, they, the, the geese were just there with us, honking and greeting the cats, while the, uh, the farmer there was naming them all and coaxing the cats to come out of the, the traps. It was, it was just a, it was a very unique environment and a lot of fun. That's great. And Kim, it must be so rewarding for you being a trapper to see the cats be released in, in a healthier, happier condition. Absolutely. Um, you know, as, as Tom and Pam had mentioned, um, you, know, you know, the cat knows exactly that they're back home. Um, you can see it in their eyes. Mm -hmm and you lift you know, the, the door off and they you know, shoot right out and, and they know exactly where they are. Um, so it's, it's a really great feeling because you, know, you also know that you know, this is where they belong. Um, they have, you know, feral cats generally are, are not going to be terribly interested in becoming a pet um, and this is their home. So mm -hmm. you're returning them back to their home and they will live a much healthier life. Uh, because they have been spay and neutered, they aren't. The males aren't fighting. The females, you know, aren't reproducing. Um, everyone is getting healthier. So it really is a win-win outcome for everyone. Yes, it puts a great perspective on the humane trapping. Absolutely. And um, and like with the cat, this just knows where he's going, jumps right through the fence. <laughs> you yeah. know, where, wherever he lives, that's that's where he's going. So it's very very rewarding to see. Occasionally, they look back at us. And it's almost like thanks or or, or no thanks, but, but then, they, then they go on go on they through. Usually look. Yes, well, one key thing with our programs is when we put the cats back home, they are all microchipped. So mm. if they get picked up or taken to the shelter or taken to a vet, uh, they can be returned back home. Those chips are traceable. We track them to every oh, address excellent. where we get them. So yeah. once they're home, they can stay home. And they've had the shots, so they're mm -hmm. healthier and happier, and they know they're going to a colony that's going to take care of them right. to give them healthy food mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Yeah, we help the caregivers and we teach them, every, if, if, they, if they missed anything before we got there, we teach them what to look for before we leave. Oh, so those right. cats are in good hands. Well, thank you so much for all that you do and for this wonderful description of the, the release um, and return of the cats. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thanks to Loudoun Community Cat Coalition. Loudoun Community Cat Coalition has provided medical care and spay-neuter services for over 3,000 community cats through the generous donations of supporters and efforts of volunteers and partners. I'm Tom with Loudoun Community Cat Coalition. Our mission is to help the cats who are, are born outdoors. We, get the, we do TNR, trap, neuter, return. We get them spayed, neutered, and vaccinated so they don't continue to reproduce outdoors. And any kittens we find while we're trapping the, uh, the parents, we get bring the kittens in and we socialize them and get them adopted as indoor pets. Those are our two major programs, the kitten rescue team and our trap, neuter, return programs. Mm -hmm.